Hello boys and girls, Mrs. Doyle here. These lessons are for the week actually, and we're gonna start with lesson 157, which is for Monday. If you look down here, you can see the words for dictation. Gentle Hannah is just kind. Up here, we are looking at dictionary skills. The first word we see in the sample of a dictionary is sea anemone. And then we go down here to sea coast, seafaring, seal, and seals twice. Hmm, maybe there's two meanings for that word. What would that be called? A synonym. Yes, some words have more than one meaning. Seal comes from the old French word that came in, I can't read this very well, turn from a Latin word meaning a little sign, seal, comes from the old English name for this, whoa, sea mammal, okay, <laughs> looks tiny, to me, I hope it doesn't look that tiny to you. At least you do have your book and that you can look at. All right, so we see two words, a seal, like when we seal an envelope is what I was thinking for, of, and then a seal, uh, the mammal that lives by the ocean. Synonyms, okay, that's the one that we uh, are thinking about today, so keep that in your mind. And then here's the other ones again. We're gonna go down here and look at which word means land along the sea. So we go back up here and we whoop, and we look. Do you see it? There, sea coast. It's a noun, seacoast, plural, hmm. Okay, interesting. Let's look at number one then. The word seafaring is a noun, verb, or adjective. Now if we look at seafaring, it says adjective. So we got that one right. The word seal is a noun, which is what we were just looking at here. We also uh, saw that it was a, they are synonyms meaning same spelling, but different meaning. Okay, and write the answer. This one, I would call it the sea coast. We may have to look in a real dictionary to find that one. Um, and then which word means earnings one, one's living at the sea? Seafaring, a seafaring person is someone who lives near the sea and also it could be a sailor who um, lives near the sea but also gets on the ship and sails out to sea. All right, we're gonna move over here. Do you see these right here? Which one comes sooner? Look at each pair of words and write the word that comes first in ABC order. Okay, and this one it says, add a suffix to each root word to make a new word. For example, E-D-I-N-G-E-R-E-N. -E -E Three, mark the bubble next to the word that is spelled incorrectly. Okay, so don't make, mark the one that is spelled correctly. That's why we should always read the directions. Sometimes we see the directions and we see the three choices and we think, Oh, I know what to do. I don't need to read that. And then 
bad things can happen. Be sure always to read the directions. Add the suffix ed. What happens when we add the suffix ed to cry? We change the y to i and add ed. It rhymes. Change the y to i and add ed. Say it with me. Change the y to i and add ed. Let's do it over here. Spied. Do we change the y to i and add ed? Yes. Change the y to i and add ed. Spied. You already knew that one if you've been paying attention in class. <laughs> Let's look at 158. 158 is talking about entry words. I'm just going to give you a look at this so that you know this is for Tuesday. But today, I'm going to also talk about this. So I'll be talking about the dictionary and about entry words in a dictionary. Everybody with me? Okay. 158. Do you see what we're doing here? Jacob's family visited Arches National Park this spring. Looks like Jacob is the subject, but his family also visited. So because it's a possessive noun, family becomes a subject, and that's a little tricky. So don't underline both of them, just family, because Jacob is part of the family, okay? And then the verb visited. They arrived. Now here's a compound subject. Jacob and Ashley saw. S compound subjects meaning more than one. Saw is the verb. What did Jacob and Ashley do? They saw. The arch stretched across 360 feet like a giant bridge. And there it is. Arch is a subject. What did the arch do? It stretches. Ashley thought. The rock. What does the rock do? It weighs. Subject, verb, subject, verb, subject, verb. Compound subjects, verb. They is the subject, arrived is the verb. And we already did Jacob and his family. Okay, now these are to be put in ABC order too. So we're moving down here. Proofreader's marks. Do you see what happened here? They forgot to put an apostrophe but they remembered up there. So you need to remember down here and you put that symbol right there that you've been doing since, well, since the time I came and joined you in January. And everyone seemed to be fairly, doing fairly well on that. Okay, now we're gonna move over to 159. Oh, a page for you to color. We'll enjoy that. Use the color key to color the Arches National Park picture. E-A-R. Color it black. E-A-R and bear. Oh, air and air, excuse me. Air and air. Air and bear. Er and earth. E and leaf, E and thread, and A and stake. I finally figured it out. <laughs> now over here we're gonna do E, R, and E, S, T. So for example, let's do the word short. Yesterday's hike was short, shorter than today. There's only two that we're comparing, so we use E, R. It compares today to another day, yesterday. Two days, yesterday and today. ER because we're comparing two days, not three. 
Let's see what this one is. Yeah, here we go. Ashley's hiking boots are the, there's the word we need to use, small. We need to see the rest of the sentence. In her family, well, there's probably more than one other person in her family, although that can happen, but we're assuming that there's a mom and a dad and a bunch of kids, okay? Ashley's hiking boots are the smallest in her family, meaning everyone has bigger feet than she does. Okay. It is hot. Hotter, now read the sentence to know whether you put hottest or hotter. It is hot now that it was, uh, than it was this morning. Oh, I compared two things. Hotter now than this morning. So we're comparing the time that is later on to the morning. That's only two things, so we would do hotter, right? Okay, the next one you need to do it with fast and pretty. And remember to read the whole sentence so you know whether to write hotter or hottest or shorter and shortest. And faster than fastest. And where's the other one? Prettier or prettiest. Circle the correct word in the sentence. Here's N-O and here's K-N-O-W. How will you know how, which one to choose? You have to read the sentence. Let's read the first one together. Did you know or know that cactus plants have beautiful flowers? Well, this is the spelling for the beautiful plants that grow that have these blooms on them. This one is something in the pantry flower that you cook with. So we went and circled that one. And now we know because it's knowledge and not no, I won't do that. You circled that one. Okay. I'm about to peek at some of these things, but this way it will help you and give you a head start. Moving on. Now we're to Thursday. Lesson 160, and what do we have here? Entry words, we're going to be talking about entry words today. So these entry words are going to help you throughout the rest of the week, knowing what an entry word is, knowing what to look for when we look at an entry word. Do you know what an entry word is? We're gonna talk about that too. And the many different things the dictionary tells us about entry words and definitions and a whole lot of other things. Okay, um, on Wednesday you didn't have a dictation. So we're gonna look at this dictation right here. Only this time, I'm not gonna show you what it says. You're going to write four words. Here are the words. Blueberry, which is a compound word, Blueberry. The next word is muffins, which is plural, muffins. The next two words are lemon, and the fourth, pie. Blueberry, muffins, lemon, pie. Okay. You're going to do some more um, E. E-A-R words, E-R words, just R, I-R, U-R, A-R, E-R, O-R, and W-R, which are all special sounds that say er. Lesson 161. This is another one that we're going to work on today. We're going to do the first for Monday and we're going to do the last and all the pages in between are those pages that will include various things that we're talking about today. A glossary is usually found in the back section of a book and gives extra information about words 
in the book. The entries are just like the dictionary, A, B, C order. Just like the dictionary. Oh, they read my mind, or I read theirs. So the first one you're gonna do A, B, C order, and then you're gonna answer some questions, and whoop, here's a dictation. Are you ready? Sleep, camp, color, rock. There are four words in Friday's dictation. Now don't worry because I've written it all out for your parents and the words will be there for you also if you do not watch this video. Let me say them again. This is for Friday, lesson 161. Sleep, camp, color, rock. Are you with me? On this section, you're going to imagine something. So your answers will vary. In other words, you're going to be creative and write something using your imagination. These are plural nouns. You circle the correct plural noun. And let's look down at number three. Find a word. You say that? Okay, you know what to do? Where is it? Oop, there it is. A, B, C order is what you need to do on that one. All right, we're gonna go back to lesson 157. Come on, we can do this. 157. And we're going to look again at the dictionary skills. And I'm going to teach you something on a chart. What do we find with dictionary skills? We find parts of the dictionary entry. Now you need to know what entry means. You see all the words on this dictionary page right here? Every single one of these words is an entry word. In other words, all the words in the dictionary are simply called entry words. They're not any particular word in the dictionary. They're every word in the dictionary. Does that help to answer what parts of the dictionary entry are? Well, no. So here's your word. Now this is one word in the dictionary. I wonder how many words are actually in a dictionary. That would be an interesting thing to do. Everybody in the room think about it and then guess. Look at a dictionary page and see how many pages are in the dictionary. And then maybe guess how many are on a page. Can you do the math for a problem that big? How many words are in the dictionary? Thousands? Ten thousands? I don't know either. It changes from time to time as we get new words. So we are just going to look at one word. Aren't you glad? Parts of the dictionary entry words, and this is. This is the circle that represents a word or any word or even the word. Hmm. Got it? Now you see all these arrows I have around it? That's because each circle here, for example, tells us something about the entry word. When you look in a dictionary at an entry word, it will tell you what part of speech it is. Is it a noun, a verb, an adverb, or an adjective? It also will tell you some others. Remember I told you we learned four parts of speech this year, but 
next year you will probably at least hear all the eight parts of speech. So there's four more. Today we're only going to think about the four we know. But what does a dictionary do with its entry words? It tells you what part of speech. Is it a noun, a verb, an adjective, an ad adverb? Okay, so check that one off. What does the dictionary do for a word? It tells you the part of speech. It tells you if there are any synonyms like words that don't mean the same thing, but they are spelled the same way. In your language book, you're gonna have a word that um, they use. Bark, B-A-R-K. Well, it, what does a dog do? Barks. But on the outside of a tree trunk, what is that stuff that goes around and protects the tree? from disease and danger. It's called bark as well, isn't it? How would you know which, which one you have? You'd have to read the whole sentence before, it would, before you would know which bark it is using. So a dictionary may have a word such as bark that will tell you both the meanings. The bark on the tree was damaged, or the bark of the dog was loud. So now we have two things. It will tell you the part of speech, noun, verb, adjective, adverb, or it will tell you if there are any synonyms and give you samples of those. Oh, and then your dictionary may give you a sentence. How is the word used in a sentence. Now, children dictionaries are mo more prone to do this than adult dictionaries, although I've seen adult dictionaries that do that. All right, now here's the one we haven't talked about. Sometimes they will put a picture in. For example, here's the picture of an, hold still, an Afghan hound. And they put a picture in there so you could see what one looked like. And then sometimes they show pictures of plants. The African violet. Those make really nice house plants. And here's a picture of a, an A-framed house. Looks like something they might do up in the mountains. Sometimes they might even show you a picture of a map. Afghanistan, that's a country all the way over on the other side of the world. So what else does a dictionary do for a word? Sometimes shows a picture, not all the time. And here's the most important one for some of us. What does the word mean? Definition, definition. What does the word mean? So how many did I have? Here's the word. One, two, three, four, five. Do you think a dictionary might even tell you more things? Sometimes they do. And sometimes they tell less than what I told you. But in general, it's about the same. Let's see if I can take a stand-up picture here and let you see it. There we go. Can you see them all? Okay. That's a very important thing to know about your entry words. So when you look one up, you don't have to just look for the definition. You might want to look for the part of speech. You might want to know if it has other meanings. Or you might want to see it in a sentence so it will help you understand the word better. And then sometimes, but not always, a picture, which is nice. Everybody likes to see a picture. Now I'm gonna show you something called the glossary. Now, I put these all together and stapled them for you. 
and why some things aren't showing up in the packet is beyond me. But you don't have to worry about it. Here's a picture of it. A glossary is usually found at the end of the book. This glossary was at the end of your language book, but we had to tear all the pages out and hand them out to you individually. So we were able to um, keep it in the book so you could see how it is in a book. But let me tell you, let me tell you the truth. It was at the very end of the book. We tore them out and we stapled them together and we put them in your packet. Now, if you don't have one, that's why I'm showing you this one today. If you do have one, it might be fun for you to look in it. Can you see that all the A's are on the first page? Is a glossary similar to a dictionary? Yes, you're right, it is. Now here's the next page, more A's. But as we get over here, we see C's. There's Canada. We know Canada, it's right above us, right above the United States. Let's turn the page again. Crocodile. Oh, national parks. The Everglades are in Florida. Grand Canyon. <gasps> we know this one. Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Let's read that one. Can you see it? Great Smoky Mountains National Park is in the state of North Carolina and Tennessee. The park gets its name from the fog that often covers the mountains, making them look smoky. Klingman's Dome is an, an observation tower in the park that is also the highest point in the state of Tennessee. Many visitors go to this park to hike, camp, and enjoy the beautiful mountain scenery. It is the busiest national park with almost six and one half million visitors each year. Did you learn some new things about the Smoky Mountains, the Great Smoky Mountains? Now we have some more animal names. What is an invertebrate? An invertebrate is an animal that has a backbone. Here's the country of Israel, Japan. Oh, a kapok tree? Don't know that one. You might enjoy looking through your glossary and learn about some places or even animals. There's a name. Now the Rocky Mountains National Park is not in Rocky Mount. Where is it? It's in Colorado. Parts of it. It's out west. Hmm. I know that tiger. United States of America. We should read that one. Yellowstone National Park. Ooh, in our math book. Do you remember learning about some things? The Yellowstone National Park? Even in our math book. Zambia is the name of the country in Africa. And that's all. So, it looks like this, and you should enjoy looking through it and reading. Now I'm going to move Be patient with me. Here we go. Oh, dog. Sorry about the dog. She's a barker. Look right here. A glossary is usually found in the back section of a book and gives extra information about words in the book. The entries are in ABC order just like a dictionary. And down here, they want you to look at that about this national park. Where are you going to find, find that? In your glossary. OK, 
Now there's a team of dogs and it's the only national park that has a, a team of sled dogs. And they even raise their puppies up there every year. They get new puppies. What they want you to do is take the names of these dogs that are part of the sled dog team and put them in ABC order, okay? And then it's gonna ask you questions. How many roads are in that national park? So we have to look it up in the glossary to find the answer. What is the unique way that a bald eagle flies? I mean, it's gonna tell us about that. What is the temperature of the water in Old Faithful Geyser and the Yellowstone National Park? Oh, we're gonna to have to look in more than one park. Whoops. Name one animal you might see on a visit to the Rocky Mountain National Park. Rocky Mountains. Ooh, I think I recognize those. Oh, a dictation. Let's do the dictation while we remember. I think I already did it. Sleep, camp, color, and rock. I did already do it. Okay, now you will complete this page and the next page on Friday. So don't try to do it all in one day, even though I've covered a lot of things in one day, all right? There's one more thing I wanna tell you about the dictionary. So we're going over here now. Bye bye, Zoe. Go on, shoot, go. All right, see that word right there, affable? Well, look over here, do you see it again? Affable is the first word on the page. So guess what affable is besides just a word in the dictionary? It is a guide word. The guide words are two for each page. Now, that's the first guideway word, affable. Afflict is the last one. So we go down here. And try to find the last word in the dictionary. Where is it? Oh, no, it's not over there. Well, where is it? Let's see. Afflict. Do you see it? Yeah. Afflict. Physical or mental suffering, ooh. Disturbed, frightened. If you're afflicted, it says that to inflict. This doesn't sound like a very happy word, does it? Afflict. Is for something to happen that makes you feel scared or you might be suffering, disturbed. Hmm, that's the last word on the page. Let's go back up here and look. Afflict, the last word on the page. And then affable. The first word on the page. What, if I was gonna give you a test and I said, these two words, affable, well, by the way, affable means to be happy, easy, pleasant, gentle, gracious. If you're affable, you're all of these things and maybe more. Oh, I like that word better. <laughs> affable is the first word on the page, afflict, is the last one on the page, and I would say on the test, what do these, what are these two words called in the dictionary? What special word defines these two words? And you would say guide words. Why are they called guide words? Because they guide us through the page. Anything that's spelled the same or in between these two will be found on this page. So if you look at affable 
and you know that your word starts with AF, you're on the right page. If it starts with AFF, do you know you're on the same page? Yeah, because afflict also is AFF. Then affable, the fourth one letter is A, and the fourth letter in afflict is I. So if you have a word that you're looking for, and it starts with A, F, F, and it's in between A and I, you know you're on the right page. Okay? All right, let's review really quick. Parts of an entry word are the things that um, the entry word has included in its definition. Well, definition, parts of speech, synonyms, words that are spelled the same, sentence, a picture maybe, and definition. I hope this will help you through the week. These are new things for you, but they'll be very useful one day when you need to use a dictionary. You'll have some understanding, even a glossary. Go back and look through your glossary. See if you can learn some new things from a glossary. All right, I will see you again. Take care, and uh, the Lord watch over you and your family and keep you safe. Bye-bye.